I'm close as hell to this camera, big ass forehead, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Let me move this big ass noggin on back before I knock y'all eyes out with this forehead. Anyway, <laughs> what is up, y'all? I hope that you're going over to patreon.com slash Adrian Expression. A new podcast episode will be going up there. You know how we do it every week on Patreon. You should definitely check it out. We always, <laughs> if you think I act up over here, you should listen to the podcast. That's all I'm saying. Check my description box for the link to that. I know I've been slacking on my other channel, but I'm gonna get back to it. Do not worry. Uh, let's go, because we got a lot of things to talk about. All right, so before I get to Tory Lanez, real quick, I just wanted to acknowledge the fact that the Renaissance Tour is kicking off in Sweden. Uh, I thought it was really cute that you know, even though this was made to look like an error screen, it obviously has the pride colors, you know, trans flag colors in there. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I just thought it was really cute. Also, this is a video of the stage. They're going into Club Renaissance here, as you can see. So, and I saw people online saying, oh, well, I need to make sure I don't see anything from the Renaissance tour until my actual tour date. And I'm just like, mama, you would have to literally deactivate every single social media account that you have. You know what I mean? Like, and not even watch TV. I don't know how, if, you're, if your day is in September or some shit, and y'all hosts talking about, oh, I don't want to see anything from the tour about the tour until I actually walk into the stadium myself. It's just like, y'all, you will have to log off. The shit is already uh, going all over the place. And at the moment that I'm recording this, she hasn't even hit the stage yet. So that's happening. Let's get to Tory Lanez right now. Now, I know I was just talking about my big forehead. It is extremely big. Um, but Tory Lanez's pineapple-shaped head has been <laughs> has been denied another trial, and I shouted for joy. I screamed um, because of ecstasy, because of euphoria. That's I mean, serotonin flooded my brain when I saw this headline, and I said I stood up and I gave a standing ovation uh, to the judge, Judge Hereford. Thank you so much for slapping that shit down. Legalaffairsandtrials.com has an article written by Megan the Reporter, <laughs> aka Megan Cunniff. Hopefully I'm pronouncing her name right. Um, and I'm going to be pulling from this as we talk about what exactly went on with this hearing. So this article says, I'm be picking around, I'm be jumping around, y'all already know. So apparently Judge David Hereford said this, in the end, the jury believed the prosecution's case beyond a reasonable doubt. Tory did not speak after the judge, Judge Hereford, uh, denied his motion for a new trial, but he told the judge before he was let out the courtroom by sheriff's deputies on Monday, he said this, please don't ruin my life. I could be your son. I could be your brother. Please don't ruin my life. So I'm guessing the main reason why Tory Lanez said you could be my brother, um, I could be your son to this judge is because the judge is black. <laughs> judge Hereford is black. So I don't know. I, I mean, I guess he, he, from the beginning, I feel like Tory Lanez knew this shit was going to be really bad for him. But I mean, up until the end, like, damn, girl, you wouldn't even take this shit and, and walk out the courtroom and just shut the hell up. He said, I could be your son. I could be your brother. So it's like, Damn, what about the humanity of Megan Thee Stallion? She's somebody's daughter. She could be somebody's sister. It's like, okay, you're talking to the judge, talking about don't ruin my life, don't ruin my life. But Tori, you did that shit yourself. What are you talking about? So Tori Lanez's sentencing is apparently scheduled for June 13th, and his lawyers can appeal his conviction and sentencing in the California Court of Appeal once he's sentenced. I'm going to talk about these appeals and stuff a little bit later. Um, but Los Angeles County Deputy District Attorney Alexander Bott said that Tory Lanez faces at least nine years in prison with a maximum of 22 years and eight months. Now, some Tory Lanez apologists, <laughs> I guess, are over here talking about, oh my goodness, 22 years is so long, blah, 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 blah. And I'm just thinking about Megan Thee Stallion who has to live with the trauma of being shot for the rest of her life. I'm thinking about the fact that you know, what if one of them bullets didn't touch her feet if they went into her fucking chest, fucked her heart up, fucked her head up, and Tory Lane's ass just firing out the car. You bitches need to think about the shit that you're doing before you do that shit, before you come over here begging this black judge to not ruin your life when you were the one shooting the goddamn gun. Get out of my face. I mean, even the DA said this, I think anytime you point a gun at someone and pull the trigger five times, 
That's an action that could easily kill a person. And I think that's an action that should have serious consequences. And he's fucking right. Get out my face. Also, these appeals, right? So, in, in, I mean, that's how the um, justice system, the court system works in general, I guess. Like, once certain decisions are made, you know, you have the right, or the lawyer, your lawyer, whatever, have the right to appeal certain decisions. I mean, if you look at this case and you have, you know, half a brain cell, you'll be able to see, okay, bitch, this motherfucker's <laughs> he's going to jail, right? And I think that uh, Tory's lawyers can see that too. And so honestly, like, I think the reason for all these appeals, of course, is to try and get some kind of mercy when it comes to these rulings. But I think the other part of it, especially if these lawyers know that this shit is not going to work. <laughs> other part of it is just getting Tory Lanez's fucking money out of his pockets. Every time, the more work that these lawyers have to do, the more coin, I'm sure, that they go charge your ass. So I'm like, girl, I'm sure these lawyers are like, yeah, girl, let's run around. Let's appeal. You want to appeal it again, girl? You want, you did shoot this motherfucker, but yeah, keep, keep appealing it, girl. As long as this invoice is clear. Bitch, they don't give a fuck. Let's read a little bit more. The judge said on Tuesday that he found no trial errors in the issues raised by Lanes's new post-conviction lawyers. But even if the judge determined the alleged errors were in fact errors, the judge said that none had such an effect on the trial that it could have changed Lanes's guilty verdicts. He said, even if all these rulings had gone your way, the outcome wouldn't be different. <laughs> Let's continue because you can smell the desperation from Tory and his lawyers when, you know, you, we talk about some of the things that happen. So Tory's lawyers not only tried to move to disqualify the judge from this case, <laughs> it was a bold move that failed, but they also tried to call witnesses. They tried to call for witnesses. Um, and the judge said that calling for witnesses is not customary for motions for a new trial in California state court because he said, quote, this is a motion for a new trial. It is not a new trial. You would think that lawyers would know that. The judge said to the lawyers, I know you don't practice in this jurisdiction, but this is how motions for new trial are done. It's literally the cart before the horse here. <laughs> it's like, y'all sound like idiots. <laughs> Megan kind of the reporter said, one thing prosecutors took major issue with was Lanes's lawyers taking to social media after sealing their filing. And they also took issue with Lanes's false claims that prosecutors manipulated his DNA and lied to the jurors. The DA said that the prosecutor actually gave all the benefit to Lanes in their analysis by saying that the DNA results were inconclusive. In reality, the results showed Lanes was slightly more likely to be included in the sample. Now, also, just because this was in the article too, remember the screenshot of someone saying that Kelsey shot Megan and Tori saying it wasn't true? <laughs> and then, you know, Tori and his lawyers tried to flip it and say, well, you know, Kelsey was the one who did it in a jump right? It's just like, girl, this shit don't make no sense. The lawyers know it don't make no sense. That's why they fucking try to pull every coin, every piece of coin that they can out of Tori's ass. The judge knows that it don't make no sense. Girl, the judge was like, okay, even if all the issues that you raised, right? Like it went your way. Even if in this hearing, all the things that you brought to me went your way and I said, yeah, it, all that still would not change the, the goddamn outcome of the trial. So you're not getting a new one. Now bitch, Tory Lanez might want new teeth. He might want a new brain, one that works a little bit better than the one he got now. He might even want a new fucking career. But let me tell you something. The one thing that he ain't gonna get <laughs> is a new trial. Take his ass back to the goddamn damn dungeons now sit your ass down and that's what the judge told you too girl he's like you can be my brother you can be my son but you're not you're going to prison <laughs> the courts have actually been dragging the hell out of a lot of weirdo men i think marilyn manson got dragged by the courts this week this headline from pitchfork says marilyn manson has multiple defamation claims against evan rachel wood thrown out by judge, so he got dragged, thankfully. And Trump also got dragged, listen to this. Jury finds Trump liable for sexual abuse and defamation in the Jean Carroll case. He apparently has to pay her millions of dollars. This was Trump's response to, th <laughs> this was Trump's response to the ruling. I have absolutely no idea who this woman is. <laughs> this verdict is a disgrace a continuation of the greatest witch hunt of all time. And one of the reasons I'm bringing this up is because if you watched my last video, I talked about how in the literal 
deposition for this case, uh, Trump was talking to the interviewer saying, confirming things like, yeah, of course, I'm a star. I can grab them by the pussy. <laughs> like, he's just like, well, I mean, it's been that way for millions of years, so why not? Like, stars can do whatever they want, and I'm a star. So in the deposition for this case, that's what he just said, and now he's surprised by the fucking ruling. Girl, this man and that tumbleweed wig needs to get out of my goddamn face. Also, George Santos, I thought that y'all might find this interesting because we had been dragging George Santos as well on this channel. Um, George Santos has been charged on a 13 count indictment, including seven counts of wire fraud, three counts of money laundering, one count of theft of public funds, and two counts of making materially false statements to the House of Representatives. This is coming from Call to Activism. In September 22, during his campaign for Congress, Santos allegedly used an LLC company number one, to defraud political supporters. He told a political consultant to falsely tell donors that their money would be used to help elect Santos, including purchasing TV ads. Two donors transferred $25,000 each to this LLC, which Santos controlled. And then after the money was transferred to Santos's personal accounts and used for personal expenses, including designer clothing, cash withdrawals, personal debts, and transfers to a... <laughs> that shit is crazy as hell to me because I'm just like, this man really tried to avoid, you know, the, uh, people calling him out for being a drag queen and at the same time, or having performed as a drag queen in the past and then supporting anti-LGBT legislation. And I'm just like, girl, you really tried to act like you weren't one of the girls when you are a stunt queen. <laughs> You are a stunt queen. Stop acting. You are a stunt queen. You are a stunt queen. And that's just one of the charges. Let me read you something else. Santos, while employed at an investment firm earning $120,000 annually, falsely claimed to be unemployed due to the COVID-19 pandemic and fraudulently received over $24,000 in unemployment benefits from June 2020 to April 2021. <laughs> queen trying to be one of the girls in the Republican Party. You're going to get bulldozed when they're done ringing you out, stupid. <laughs> Girl, get out. Okay, get out of my face. Get out of my face. Get out. Anyway, since we're talking about weirdo men, um, <laughs> we can end this video being a little bit messy. You know, it's the end of the video. Let's be a little messy. Um, and talk about DVG, right? So, well, first, let's talk about Hallie. Hallie looked fucking amazing. I love this dress. Um, the theme of it matching, obviously. But I, she looked amazing at the Little Mermaid premiere. There have been a lot of praise, a lot of praise, saying that Hallie's the best part of this movie. They're calling Hallie's performance a star-making performance. It's really, really cool stuff, right? And then DDG, her fucking man, I guess, gonna tweet this shit. Like, y'all already know what I said. I was just like, we gotta be nice because Hallie is still in her early 20s and she's just figuring niggas out and shit. Like, so I get it. But I just am really annoyed with, with DDG, right? So this is what he said. Literally on the day of the premiere, I'm seeing pictures of Hallie in her dress, you know, talking to reporters about, you know, the movie. And here come her man talking about, should I watch the cartoon Little Mermaid before I watch the live action version or just watch the new one? I've never seen it. Like literally on the day of the premiere. Bitch, Hallie been filming for how many months? You didn't sit your ass down to watch the shit, watch the cartoon, ask her about it. It's just, it's like you ain't seen the Little Mermaid. It's just weird shit. Like why would you say that shit and your partner is out there, it's just, I don't know, it's weird. And then I saw this tweet, and I think this person is so right. This is a kind of subtle unkindness that seeps out of men when you're in your life and you're having your moment. Maybe he isn't outright mean about it, but he'll find little ways to disregard you and belittle you. Someone asked DDG, you lying, no way you haven't watched Little Mermaid. And he talking about, I grew up watching Baby Boy and Don't Be a Menace, real screek nigga movies. Like, girl, he a weirdo to me. I just really want him to stay away from Hallie, like, so bad. <laughs> so bad. Anyway, love y'all so much. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like I said, make sure you check out my Patreon for my podcast and all that. And make sure that you have a good.